I am Paul Madib Atreides, son of Leto Atreides, Duke of Arrakis. And I finally saw Dune Part 2. Hello everybody, my name is Sucker Games, and welcome to my little review of Dune Part 2. I finally saw it. I finally saw it. And you were all so right. So, so right. This, this movie is peak. It is unironically so, so peak. It is so good. I saw people being like, this is as good as The Godfather. Or this is like The Return of the King or Empire Strikes Back. And I was like, is it really that good? You know, it's a modern movie. I don't know if it could be, you know, that good. Especially with how everyone just wants to churn out slop nowadays. And I really liked Dune Part 2, but after hearing some of the stuff about what was happening and going on with it, uh, I was like, but I, I watched it, I finished it last night, uh, came home, and oh, it's so good. I want to preface really quickly. Um, there has been some controversy around this movie, and I want to address that really quickly. Uh, I'm not saying that people out there being rightfully cautious of a movie uh with a white main character that leads an entire group of of uh of indigenous people into a jihad on the surface level might seem like a very bad concept and might lean into things like white savior uh and i'm not one of those people that complains about when a movie is woke uh, and by the way, this movie very much is, if despite how people will want to blatantly ignore that, uh, it the entire movie is to show how bad this entire premise of Paul Atreides is. It is not to glorify it. For the first 45 minutes, it seems like, you know, he's a good guy. You know, I mean, I think we can all kind of see that, say that. Like, the Harkonnens are fuck ugly bad, right? They are horrid. And, I mean, the Atreides weren't the best, seeing as how they also owned entire worlds. Um, but whenever comparing the two, Paul was literally wanting to give the Fremen back their land and give them back what they had and everything like that. It wasn't until the last 40 minutes that he turned evil and became a homicidal, genocidal maniac uh, that will go on to kill amount of people um yeah so with that out of the way this movie is awesome it is so so good i i've been so tired of movies just lacking creativity recently um or not like having deep stories or like a nuanced story and so on and obviously i i like to go to like my tv shows for that sometimes um, but I like watching a good movie that is thought-provoking and deep or so on. And this movie certainly is. It, it it begs a lot of questions. Now, I'm going to say this also. There is no subtlety in this movie. Like, clear, there are shots where it's like, uh, subtlety, out the window. Subtext, out the window. There's still subtext and nuance. But it's just so loudly telling you, look at the subtext. Look at the Look at the nuance of this think 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 and i love that I, I i really really do um let alone just how visually stunning those moments are the entire scene with the black sun which at first i was like that's kind of a little bit more fantastical than sci-fi and i know dune is it borders on like sci-fi fantasy and then hard sci-fi it, it flips flops between them because there's spies and other things but then there's still suits and the entire ecology of arrakis um it's 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 really good and it's really cool and especially the explanation that i heard was that it's black not because the sun itself is black but because it's burning so hot that it's letting off a uv radiation that makes it appear black and therefore we can't see that color and that is portrayed through the film that is awesome also the like ink blot fireworks that like look like it's fabric burning away it, it's so cool there are so many cool moments here um 
I I, I want to touch on the story a little bit. We we pick up right back where we left off the last um about right where we left off last time. And I think it's really cool starting off with uh a monologue or of narration of the uh emperor's daughter. Um because in the book there are moments of every chapter of history book excerpts um from like in world history books and i thought that that was a really cool inclusion whenever i was watching i was like oh that's that's trying to do this and um it it definitely seems like that's what they were doing uh we then pick up with paul having more visions and he is on the hunt with fremens to bite back at the harkonnens and the harkonnens don't realize that he's a he's alive and the movie continues on with that of them fighting and having these freedom fighting moments of taking down huge Harkonnen spice miners and all sorts of other things eventually uh Gurney comes back and everything like that this this will have spoilers if you haven't watched it already um this is just me talking and analyzing and just spouting off words about my thoughts of the movie um And it's so interesting to see, like, all of these people that are influencing Paul, but also realizing by the end of the movie that this was in Paul all along, and he was actively trying not to do it, um, because there's a part of him that wanted to do good. Uh, Like, it's even talked about how if you lose control, no, if I gain it, you know, that whole thing, and... um, Oh my god, Stilgar. I want to talk about Stilgar uh, and move on into... uh, This is going to be all over the place. Sorry. Um, uh, Stilgar is such a glazer, dude. I thought the jokes were like, kind of, you know, he's like, It's like, but no, it is. He is such a glazer. He is such a hype man. I love him so much. (laughs) The Lissona Gaib is so humble. He can't admit that he who he is. It's so... It's so funny. Ah, uh, he is so good, too. And then, like, how he actively is like, what about me, Lissana Gaib? And, <laughs> and then Paul tells him what happens. He just goes, <sighs> oh. <laughs> the entire scene of, like, the jihad forming and seeing this cult of personality actively forming uh, in front of our eyes is just so good. I really liked what they did with Chani. And Zendaya played her so good. Zendaya plays a lot of characters really good. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, despite the issues that have come out about him, uh, he played his fucking ass off in this movie, and I will give him that. Um, the The range that I've seen of him going from Wonka to now this is, is crazy. It is amazing. Um, let's see. Gurney is really cool coming back. I really enjoy him coming back. Uh... I just forgot the actor's name. It was just on the tip of my tongue. I'm going to remember it, and then I can't sleep. Uh, <laughs> but Thanos' actor uh, is... I really, really enjoyed him. I, I loved seeing his interactions with Paul and being like, Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Do something. They think you're a god. Use it. Uh, and then there were some of the other Fremens uh, that were spotted around. I really liked some of the background characters. But... One surprising character, before I get into Jessica, because I really want to talk about Jessica, is the Emperor himself. Uh, <laughs> I, I I saw a lot of jokes coming out about because the actor, God, I can't, I'm, name is blanking me again, but obviously a lot of people always make jokes about his voice, but oh my God, he plays the, the Emperor so good. He plays him so well. Like, seeing him be this old, troubled man that also possesses no concept of fear when staring Paul down is so cool it, until he finally does show fear. Uh, it, it is so cool. The Benny Jesuit, uh, Reverend Mother is also really, really fucking evil. Holy shit. Um, Jessica. Let's get to Jessica. People always talk about how evil Paul Atreides is as a character, but I've, I never see people talk about how evil Jessica is. Because she led her son into this. She she was the one that kind of <laughs> caused it all to happen. You know, actively planting the superstitions uh, into the Fremen people and everything with the Bene Gesserit. And then actively trying to get her son to take up the position 
of both the son of Gaib and the the boy voice, the child of the voice, the male of the, with the voice, or I forget the actual uh, full like word for that. I just got a Discord notification. I'm going to turn that off. Um, it was really, really cool to see that entire uh, aspect of that world. And that's where the nuance comes in. Is like, yeah, it's pretty blatant to, to call it propaganda and everything, but it really made you think about what was going on and who the good guys were. Like, if you watched Dune Part 1, hadn't read the books, and then going to Dune Part 2, you're like, okay, well, Paul must be the good guy. He's got issues, but maybe he is. And the, there are so many seeds that are planted that tell you that, no, he's not. Um, but moving on from characters, I want to move on to visuals. I already, I already gushed about the visuals a little bit, and oh my god, the cinematography, the VFX, everything is so good. It, it's just so stellar. The costuming, dude. Like, the way that Paul's robe that he wears is tattered and, like, sun-beaten. The way that you just can just see everything is dirty and smudged and, you know, filled. Not even just filled with sand. Just, like, interacting with the sand of Arrakis around. And then, like, the cultural items of, like, the Chris knife and... um just like some of the little tiny details on the Fremen of like what they wear and everything like that is is so stellar. The vehicle design, like just taking ideas from the book and then transferring that into the most like logical and in character aesthetic design of those. Because I've seen some concept art um, from as early as whenever Dune was first coming out and seeing that compared to modern dune i feel like what happens in modern dune really sells this future way better because it, it is very esoteric looking while also feeling so sci-fi like there was some stuff about the baron about how he had all this jewelry on and he was like kind of always in like beads like his entire shirt was made of beads and metals and everything like that uh but then turning that into the silk flowing robe that he wears is, I think, a far better decision that really hammers home. Uh, there were parts of this movie where I was like, "How did he? How did he get that theme across?" <laughs> like, to be like, "What the? F what the fuck, dude? Oh, wait, what the fuck? What the? How did he? How did he put?" put that idea onto the screen like <laughs> like the way that this movie just executes is so good i am still gar glazing right now it is it's so good um there are little tiny parts that like make you just look uh there is such attention to detail like how there's a part earlier in the movie where you can see the sand kind of interacting with the shields because of the Fremen walking across it, but you can see that the bottom of their feet aren't interacting with it, and it's above the ankle, which is, I think, talked about in the actual, uh, the books about how, like, shields can be, like, activated stronger in certain spots and everything, and, like, the idea that, like, yeah, shields are almost like a win-all situation, unless you have one of those things that stops and then, pew, you know, um... But hearing and seeing, like, with Fade Rotha, oh my god, Fade Rotha, I completely forgot to talk about him. Quick little side tangent, he is so good. The actor, I saw a little funny thing saying that, like, he was trying to keep the Elvis voice back, but that first little line that he says in his introduction, I was like, oh my god, he's, you can almost hear the voice in that. <laughs> but he was so good. May thy knife chip and shatter. May thy ass shit and splatter. Uh, he's so good. His whole thing, his whole character and the actor are just so fucking good. Um, anyway, back to it. Uh, like there are, there's just so many tiny details like that. They're just riddled throughout the entire, entire, uh, film that just makes you 
want to go back and rewatch it. I can now understand why that guy, I think Mark on Twitter or whatever, it has watched Dune like twenty Dune Part Two twenty times already and just keeps going round after round. It is it's like spice. It is addicting. It is it is crazy. Uh the one thing that maybe people in the comments may be able to answer for me is why Paul didn't use the voice more in this movie? Unless he did, and, like, the voice thing wasn't really showing. Because there's obviously the silent scene, and then there was the uh, scenes with Jessica and so on. But you would expect for something like the voice that he would use it more often. There's a lot of points where I just expected him to use it when he was so close to people, but he just didn't. Um, maybe it's draining, maybe he doesn't have a lot of spice going through him, or who knows. Because I know the spice helps the voice and so on. So maybe that was one of the issues. But yeah, it the entire movie is just chock full of so much shit. That you can just constantly think back to and be like, oh my god, I should have talked about this. Like, I will literally probably stop recording this whoop, hair and be like, oh, I should have talked about this. Or, oh, I should have talked about that. But there's just so much to talk about. It is so good. To see this film be so successful and um, and have it be that it's not about a good guy. It's about a fucking terrible guy. It has the nuance of being like, hey, <laughs> look how bad this is. And I and seeing funny enough people coming around and being like, yeah, Paul's a good guy. He's all right. He he's absolutely right to launch nukes to commit a holy war and everything like that. Um it's so funny that Dune Messiah, the next films that will be coming out, will be literally just saying how bad Paul is, and I cannot wait. Uh, anyway, other than that, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Dune Part 2. Have you seen it? Let me know what you think. Uh, and if you want to see more of this, uh, click subscribe. If you want to donate to my cash app, you can. There is no real incentive to it, but you will get a shout out if you comment down below that you did it. Other than that, I will see you guys next video. Bye-bye. Silence!